See, I gotta draw a line, I can't take it no more If you ain't down with revolution, what you waiting for? Making money for suckers and not communities poor Ripping flags off the of coffers, man, this ain't our war Colonizing terrorize I am Elliot Adams. Um, I, I do, do a lot of my work with Veterans for Peace, um, and I'm also involved with the Upstate Coalition to Ground, ground the Drones and End War, uh, which is the organization, it's the central organization of this action we're having in, uh, in Syracuse and Hancock. Um, you know, but maybe could you talk about, a little about that, uh, that change from going from being somebody in the military to a, an anti-war activist or peace activist? Sure, so we have to back up, back up to the, 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 the era of Vietnam. In, in, during Vietnam, I volunteered for the army, volunteered to be a par paratrooper, mm -hmm. um, and volunteered to go to Vietnam. And um, I'm one of the few people who got what I volunteered for, and they gave me infantry besides. Uh, um, but so then I served in Vietnam, Japan, Korea, Alaska. Um, so I, I have gone from um, actively volunteering to, to fight a war to believing that all wars are, as General Eisenhower said, stupid. Mm -hmm. um, the, so it's been, it's been sort of a long journey, and it's, it's worth noting for people who sometimes wonder whether other people can change that many of us in the peace movement have gone that way. Mm -hmm. And, I, and it's, been, it's been a long, slow process. It's taken me many, many years. To, uh, so originally I believed the myths about, um, oh, the previous generations fought the wars, whether, whatever the hell war it was, mm -hmm. and uh, now it's my turn to step up. Um, I went to Vietnam somehow believing I was protecting my mother and sister from the Viet Cong. 10,000 miles across the ocean with an effective firing range of, what, 1,000 feet? <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, and, and none of it made sense. I now recognize that I was, uh, that I committed war crimes, um, that we all committed war crimes, mm -hmm. uh, um, that I was making, asking the wrong questions. I was asking whether or not um, the person I was seeing, whether it uh, was, was a... Uh, well, let me put it this way. I, instead of, I was following the rules of engagement and, and the direct orders of my officers, and in the process, I was, was, was ignoring the international law, the Geneva Conventions, the uh, Nuremberg Principles, which I was also legally obligated to, to, to follow. Mm -hmm. But uh, more importantly, I came out of Vietnam recognizing that um, there is no way this process, namely war, can give birth to peace. Mm -hmm. Go in there and you start burning hooches, wait, raping women, killing a man, uh, leveling a leveling a town. Uh, you know, not, no, not not the way. <laughs> that's not the way you get the peace. Yeah. Uh, and of course, since then I've recognized. Since then, you know, I, I I served all those places. I also went down to Grenada after we attacked Grenada. Uh, I spent time in Gaza after Operation Cast Lead during the siege, which has given me, you know. Frankly, I've got a pretty good education in war, um, and I've recognized that war is not about national security. It doesn't create national security. We know how to create national security. It's not about um, about um, conflict resolution. It doesn't resolve conflicts. We know how to resolve conflicts, mm -hmm. um, and that leaves me wondering, so what is war about? And my conclusion has been that every single war I have participated in or studied it is very clear to me that a few people have made vast sums of money. And if that is the one consistent outcome, mm -hmm. why do we refuse to consider whether it might not be the cause? Right, right. Um, that's my conclusion. So I believe that's, that's, that's why we are fighting these wars. Um, and uh, I have come to, to agree with General Eisenhower when he said, I hate war as only a soldier who has lived it can. One who has seen its brutality, its futility, and its stupidity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow! Yeah. So, so you were in Vietnam. You were in these other areas of warfare, and then you had a switch, where you determined this is your conclusion that this is not um, a productive way to like solve conflict, find peace. Um, and I'm wondering, 
out of that transition for you, that transcendent experience, like what kind of activism has you, have you done over the years and, and how has that impacted your life personally? Well, um, I spent a lot of that time in transition as a closet vet, uh, refusing to acknowledge my veteranship. Um, I didn't know how to cope with that. Um, but I was active and I believed in, in justice. Um, and I spent, I've got over 15 years in a local, a local elected public office. Uh, and I enjoyed making government work for people. But, uh, and I was considering running for the U.S. Congress. But I began to recognize that that's not a way to create, to create justice either. That um, that energy, that that justice, the only way change happens is from the, from the, from the ground up. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it's supposed to happen. I mean, Congress was not created to, to create change. It was created to establish, to maintain the status quo. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talk uh, about political leaders. That's an oxymoron. We didn't hire them to create change. We didn't hire them to do what they want to do. We hired them to do our work. Mm -hmm. That's not leadership. That's following. Um, That's the way it's supposed to be. The way we the way we will create the justice and or create and create peace is by the people demanding it. Just as in Hancock, we have a situation where the U.S. government is committing war crimes, Mm -hmm. crimes against peace, crimes uh, crimes against war. I mean, crimes of war, um, and. They are not going to stop committing war crimes by themselves. They are only going to stop committing war crimes if we make them. Mm-hmm. And we do that by getting lots of people to understand this is that generation after generation has gone to war. We as soldiers have always come home believing that we needed to have peace. After World War II, we, we went through the process of the Nuremberg trials and the Tokyo trials. We created the Nuremberg principles. Um, as a process to say, this is what we have to do to have peace. Mm -hmm. So to watch these people violate international law, violate the principles of humanity, um, is uh, is an insult to all the people who gave their life to war. Innocent. Not to mention all the civilians and non-combatants who gave their their life to their stupid war. If there were three things that you really wanted people to know about you and what's happening on this weekend uh, in April, the last weekend in April, what would those three three things be? <laughs> well, I think that it's important to understand that drones are being used to commit war crimes. Mm-hmm. They're inherent. They're a weapon which is inherently. Um, destined to or prone to or likely to be used for committing war crimes um, that it will not be stopped unless we the people spend time um, making it stop. It will will not be stopped unless we the people make it stop. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what we're there for. Also it's amazing these guys are committing war crimes and then they are, um, and we try to say, hey, wait, we try to issue, uh, 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 hand them an indictment, uh, say, charging them with the war crimes. And they don't, you know, you think they might ask, okay, why? Maybe, why would we be committing war crimes? What, what's going on here? Instead, they refuse to do it. Um, they knew we were coming one time and had a preemptive arrest, which was, which was not only so now not only are they committing war crimes, they're denying us our, our First Amendment right to petition our government for redress, not to mention freedom of assembly and freedom of speech. And then since then, they've issued a order of protection, which is a complete misuse of the law. That's a that's a, a order which is designed to do a very important thing, which is to protect victims of domestic abuse from their abusers. Mm-hmm. And they're using it to protect themselves from embarrassment. Can you uh, tell me what, like, break down a war crime for me. Like, how are the drones causing war crimes? How are the people flying them causing war crimes? And what is the definition of a war crime? So war crimes are, are a bot. We now have a body of law uh, which defines war crimes, and it's fairly lengthy because the front crimes you can commit are in war numerous. 
Uh, every, but let me talk for the drones. Every weapon system has certain things it's effective at. Mm -hmm. A aircraft carrier is very effective at creating an airfield out in the middle of the ocean near somebody else's border. Mm -hmm. A submarine is very effective at high hiding ballistic missiles from being found. The things that drones are good for is operating way behind the um, front line of battle, the battle, the, the battlefield, mm -hmm. uh, as we would call it, which means by definition that they are operating in the area of civilians. Right. Killing civilians is a violation of international, uh, 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 is, is a war crime. Okay. The idea is that if you want to have a war, um, there are certain rules you should, should, should do it by, and that is uh, uniformed soldiers fight uniformed soldiers. You don't prosecute the war against uh, civilians. So they're naturally prone, prone to that violation. The other thing is the weapon that a, that a um, drone has is the Hellfire missile. Um, the Hellfire missile kills with a large explosion. Mm -hmm. Large explosions are, of course, indiscriminate. Uh, so another uh, element of international law is that what you do must be discriminate. You must discriminate against combatants, non-combatants. You must discriminate against um, just causing destruction and, and prosecuting war. So um, there's those two things. And then thirdly, uh, what are we using them for? We're using them for assassinations. We are saying that we believe that John Doe is a uh, is part of the enemy. We don't know it. He's never been to a trial. Uh, there's been no process for convicting him or proving the facts. There's no been no presentation of the facts. But we believe that he is a a combat. Mm -hmm. Next, we go to another step and we say, this guy in our murder. We believe he's John Doe. We don't have any DNA, we don't have any fingerprints, uh, we don't have any witnesses, we don't have anything, but we believe he's done though. Um, and then we kill him. These are assassinations. Mm -hmm. And assassinations are, are, are illegal in international law. They're also illegal in, in, in our personal law, our national law. Because we as a people said, that's not the way we do things. We arrest people, we put them on the docket, we have a legal process which says you're innocent until you're first you're proven who you are, secondly you're proven that you're guilty. So that's why drones are a weapon which inherently is going to be committing war crimes. And war crimes are really, really important issue. Mm -hmm. uh, war is terribly destructive, mm -hmm. uh, and we, through generations and generations, literally thousands of years, we have been trying to. We have had certain principles. We have said that. Um, are just inhumane and wrong, and maybe you need to have a war, but you don't do it this way. Mm -hmm. And that's what war crimes are. So when people tell you, but Elliot, drones are saving American lives, what, what's your response to that? Well, I would say it's wrong. Uh, the fact of the matter is it's costing American lives. Um, in time, we are going to recognize that drones are a, a stupid weapon. Um, they're a stupid weapon for a couple of reasons. One is you can't do any, things you're, any of the things you're trying to do in warfare with a drone. You can't, you can't take, take property. You can't control an area. You can't control resources. You can't do, you can't, you can't do anything but blow a few people up with drones. Um, and that doesn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. Now, Generally, we are using them for what we would call fourth-generation war or asymmetrical war or guerrilla warfare, uh, different terms that are pretty similarly used. We all know, um, we knew it before, we know it from the work of Mao Zedong, we know it from the work of Che Guevara, we know it from the work of Vietnam, that guerrilla warfares, the guerrilla war, war or uh, asymmetrical warfare is won by winning minds and uh, hearts and minds. That's what happens. You win the hearts and minds of the people. Otherwise, you lose, period. Mm -hmm. Drones lose hearts and minds and therefore lose wars. You cannot win an asymmetrical war with drones because every single time you, you pull the trigger, uh, assuming that you hit the person you want to hit, you also hit a whole bunch of other innocents. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those innocents, of course, all of their, uh, they all have relatives, and every single one of them 
um, is gets mad and, and now becomes a uh, a, uh, um, a guerrilla war, you know, war, you know, besides participating in the war, and attacks us and hates us. Right. And it's very, very clear. We've seen it. Uh, it's been documented in, in, in Pakistan. Um, it only makes sense. You know, we are doing things that are just like unconscionable. We're using double, what we are called double strikes. Hmm. So double strikes are you fire a missile, you wait, you, you, you wait 15 minutes and you fire one exactly the same spot. Mm-hmm. That's a technique which in this, in this country we would be considered unconscionable. It's a way of killing the first responders. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. If you, if you have a strike and then you wait 15, 20 minutes and strike again, then all you're doing is killing the first responders, the police, the emergency, emergency people and stuff and so on. When you do that, um, nobody has any respect for you. Nobody. It's unconscionable. Uh, we also are firing, most of our, our strikes are, are occurring at night. And we are firing them into compounds, what we call compounds. Compounds are the way people in Pakistan live. They are in communal homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, communal homes have like any other communal home, have the husbands, the wives, and the children. Um, so we are choosing a technique of um, a, a targeting technique, which, again, is, um, a, a, aside from the fact that weapon by itself is likely to create enemies, the, uh, our targeting system creates even more because, you know what? If somebody started blowing up people's homes with their wives and their children around here, if we took every soldier now, now in theory, the soldiers, for example, for example, in Syracuse, mm-hmm. are active participants in war and therefore are legal targets for warfare. Mm-hmm. If somebody started blowing up their houses and killing their children and wives, we would think it was we would be pretty upset. We would think it'd be wrong, and in fact. We not only would not acquiesce to the other other people, a whole bunch of us would start fighting fighting the enemy in that case. Right. Um, so it's a weapon that does. There's another another aspect about drone which fits it, they, they, which makes them an ineffective weapon for the same. Uh, which is that you can hear them. That's where they got a name from, from drone. And uh, it is really obnoxious and scary to hear them droning around up there, knowing at any at any moment. Some jerk may make a mistake and fire fire a help, uh, missile. Mm-hmm. I guess what, what, it, what this this con- convergence is coming up, and what's your role in the convergence? Well, um, I have been arrested a number of times at Hancock. Uh, <laughs> they have um, raised the stakes for us by this order of protection, so that we are in theory can face a seven year sentence oh, wow. um, just for being there. Um, so that, and also so that it's very, very helpful for us to have other people come in to reinforce us, to cover our butts while we try to solve this problem of, of, uh, of the, um, what I believe is an illegal application of the laws for, um, orders of protection. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm involved in that and I'm involved in the planning and trying to do like all, like all actions, it takes a lot of work and there's a lot of pieces to be done and everybody's got to get their shoulder behind the wheel. Is there anything you would like to be asked that I have not asked you thus far? Well, I, I think it's really important for people to show up. Um, um, change does not happen without people people getting, in, getting out there and taking an action. As Dr. King so eloquently said, these are times of real choices, not false ones. Every man must choose his method of, of resistance, but everybody must resist. That's a paraphrase, but the point is that um, the only way we, we created any of the justice we've ever, ever had in this world is by people, ordinary people, saying, you know, this is wrong, and I'm going to stand up for it. So I encourage folks to come, um, participate, uh, find the level of resist- resistance, which is, is, is in keeping with their principles, mm-hmm. and uh, join us. Uh, and try to try to stop our government from committing war crimes, war crimes which are, um, I believe, making our soldiers much more at risk. Uh, war crimes which are costing us vast sums of money. Incidentally, every single time they fire a hell, a, a hellfire missile, that's sixty-eight thousand dollars. 
I remember the first one, one of the first times they openly mentioned it, um, it turned out they, they spent, uh, they fired, this was the 10th time they tried to fire the guy. So they spent $680,000 killing this one guy. That's ridiculous. And as I said to them, you know, I don't know that I really agree with this, but I can tell you this much. Give me $300,000 and a passport and I'll go take care of the guy for you. And that'll <laughs> save you half the money. Right, right. You know, this is crazy. Yeah. I know that police stations in the United States have been looking at buying drones. And do you have any comment about drones and unmanned aerial vehicles in the United States? Well, there's a couple of issues. One issue is in Syracuse. So what they want to do is they want to fly the drones out of the Hancock airfield. Right now they're flying them out of Fort Trump. Uh, to fly them out of, out of Syracuse or out of Hancock means that there's going to be drones flying in the same airspace as civilian aircraft. Now, frankly, we're having trouble enough keeping civilian aircraft up in the air where they belong anyway. Uh, and, if we, and if they're going to crash, we don't want them crashing in, in a city. Um, drones are a particular problem. First of all, they don't have, they by definition do not have avoidance uh, uh, software, which all civilian uh, aircraft have. So they will automatically avoid each other. Um, they are stealth in that they're designed not to be able to be seen easily by radar. So they can't be seen by the civilian aircraft um, avoidance radar, and they can't be seen easily by the radar on the towers. And indeed, they don't have the transponders because all of the civilian aircraft have trans mm -hmm. transponders so that when they get pinged by radar, they, they scream. So they can be seen. So the idea of flying them in the same space as civilian aircraft and, and taking them off, off and landing, which is the most dangerous time for any aircraft, mm -hmm. is really, frankly, stupid. Uh, and if I were uh, lived in Syracuse, I would be terrified. Um, the other issue is the question of surveillance of people. Um, and um, drones are effective for, for, search, is it, for surveilling people. That's why we do it. Uh, I think folks should recognize when they hear about their police department having drones that the software that they use in uh, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan automatically identifies weapons. Mm -hmm. So the, the um, camera is scanning around taking pictures at random and the software says, oh, there's a weapon there, there's a weapon here, um, and pins the, the GPS location at a time which means that um, for those who are concerned about, about firearms, mm -hmm. um, if there's drones flying around, every time you're walking around, um, going to take a shot at a woodchuck in the backyard. If it's a drone flying around, it's going to identify that weapon and pin the time and location. And actually, um, they also use face recognition from drones, so they might even, even be capturing your face so they can identify where it was, when it was, and who it was carrying a weapon. Um, and that's the kind of, and that, that happens automatically. Nobody has to look at it, just automatic. Um, so that's the kind of thing that's, that we're looking at with um, drones uh, owned by the police departments. Wow. Um, geez. Um, you know, I asked Nick Matron when I talked to him this question. I was just like, how, how can people resist? They can come to this convergence, which is a great start, get some knowledge, um, participate in different things going on over the weekend. But like in your ideal world, like how are people resisting drones coming into their airspace and being flown in other people's airspace? Well, the first part of any any kind of resistance is, is to under is, is education. Mm -hmm. You need to know what the problems are, um, and then you need to begin working on them. What does working on them look like? It can look like all kinds of things. As Dr. King said, every man must find his, the the form of resistance which fits his his principles. Um, it can look like just talking to the, to the person at the, at, at the grocery store, mm -hmm. talking to your neighbor, um, saying this does not make sense. This is not, the, this does not comply with American principles, the things we believe in. When we talk about Americanism, we, do not, we are not talking about killing kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not talking about blowing people's homes up who, who may or may not be, be involved in, in, in the war or not. We, don't, we believe in the principle of innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. These are the things we fought, fought uh, what our independence was based on, is getting away from that kind of imperialistic 
um, governmental process. Mm -hmm. So you should be you should be opposed to it. And the only way change happens is by um, it coming from the ground. It means talking to your your neighbors. It means talking to your family members. It means talking to your congressmen. It means if you are depending on how, where you are. For me, it means violating you know petitioning my government for redress, even though they arrest me in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, First Amendment gives me that right to petition for re, 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 redress. I mean, the courts say, oh, well, you have lots of other ways of doing it. The courts in, in, in Syracuse. I mean, if you were to petition the government for redress, asking them to quit committing crimes with drones, what are you going to do it at the post office? No, you're going to do it at the base of they, where, they, where they are firing them from. What are you going to do it at the, at the Social Security office? <laughs> You know, I, I don't know where you think we're going to do this at. Yeah. Uh, the play, there are two places you could do it. You might do it at the White House, or you do you knock on the door of the uh, governmental offices where the crime is committed and say, do it. And I find it ironic. I mean, I'm walking down along the fence, and outside the fence, they're arresting me for trespassing or disturbing the peace, and inside the fence, they're not arresting anybody for, for, for a murder. You know, what's so magical about that darn fool fence? Uh, we're, we're standing out front saying they're committing murder inside, and they're saying, well, you're under arrest for trespass. Right. Topsy-turvy world we live in, you know. It's, yeah. 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 Could you just tell me, like, where, where can people get more information if they wanted to about what you're doing and what's important to you? Well, probably the best place to go is to... Um, Upstate Drone Action, is that what it's called? Yeah, upstatedroneaction.org. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's probably the best best website we have on it. Okay. Um, any any other sources you want to give or not? Well, there's obviously veteransforpeace.org, uh, but they aren't, for some reason or other, they can't figure out how to get involved with this, but we'll, we'll work on that next year. Okay, Ted. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time again. And, thank, uh, thanks so much. Yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you uh, at the end of April. Sounds great. All right. Have a good day. Yep. Bye. Right. Bye. I am Elliot Adams, and you are watching Rochester Indie Media. I rock hard like Palestinian children holding slingshots. I'm with every single kid that's down for hip hop, for the culture, the life, what it really stands for. This music is resistance. It's the voice of the poor. I'm on the side of the work because the teachers and lunch ladies on the streets with brown mommies raising our brown babies. I'm with youth organizers cleaning up the Bronx River. I'm like I miss Galante when I stand and deliver. I'm with Evo Morales, man. He